Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cyclic AMP signaling. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the G inhibitory pathway. Uh, so we're going to look at it in some detail, and uh, what we're going to do is then we'll look at uh, examples of receptors which are coupled to the GI, uh, or the G inhibitory G protein, uh, inhibitory, inhibitory, is that how you spell that? Inhibitory uh, pathway. Okay, uh, and we'll also look at drugs which interact with this pathway, so agonists and antagonists for the receptors, and also a few drugs which act downstream. Okay, so let's begin with actually looking at the pathway itself. So, the starting point is that you need to have a cell which has in its membrane a G protein coupled receptor which is coupled to the G inhibitory G protein. Okay, so let's say this is a uh, G protein coupled receptor which has um, seven transmembrane domains, like so. Uh, well, seven membranes spanning alpha helices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, um, one name for this is a G protein coupled receptor. Other people refer to it as a 7 transmembrane receptor, so 7TM. Um, whatever you want to refer to it, it's what, what I mean is a G protein coupled receptor which is going to be coupled to the G inhibitory G protein. Okay, so we're going to keep it nice and general at the moment, so we're not going to name any specific examples, and so that we can keep it nice and general, uh, we'll say that the uh, ligand for this, rather than giving a specific example, we'll um, just call it ligand, basically. So, the ligand comes and binds to this GPCR, and that's going to activate the GPCR and activate its catalytic activity. Okay, so before we can see what the GPCR is actually going to do, we need to introduce another player, which is the in G inhibitory heterotrimeric G protein. Okay, so here is the G inhibitory heterotrimeric G protein. So G proteins consist of uh, three subunits, at least heterotrimeric G proteins do. There are other types of G proteins, although heterotrimeric G proteins are the most famous. Right, so this is a heterotrimeric G protein, I'll just write that down. Hetero means different, trimeric means that it's made up of three subunits, so it's made up of three different subunits, and these three different subunits are alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, there are 16 choices for the alpha subunit that you use, there are 5 choices for the beta subunit you use, and there are 12 choices for the gamma subunit you use. Right, so, um, if we say that this is a G inhibitory G protein, so let me get some colour on here. Okay, so if I say, if I name this G protein as a G inhibitory heterotrimeric G protein, if I say that it is GI, what does that actually mean? It means that this alpha subunit is a specific type of alpha subunit. It's not just any old one of these 16. It is specifically alpha I. Okay, now there are there is another type of heterotrimeric G protein which can also stimulate uh, effectively the exact same pathway that the G inhibitory heterotrimeric G protein um, Activate. So this is um, G0, okay? And the G0 heterotrimeric G protein, uh, it's named G0 because the alpha subunit is the alpha 0 subunit. So these are two different alpha subunits from these 16 possible alpha subunits. Okay, now GI and GO basically do exactly the same thing. So often you will see people write GI slash O to denote that the G protein we are talking about is either GI or it's GO. It's not some sort of combination of the two. It's one or the other, basically. That's what that notation means. It's just sloppy. Rather than writing GI or GO, we just write GI slash O. Okay, and basically each of these types of G protein, GI and GO, they have a specific alpha subunit, alpha I and alpha O respectively, but their beta and their gamma subunits can be whatever you want, basically. So those aren't specific. So the GI and the GO refers to what type of alpha subunit you are using. Right, so 
We therefore are, if we if we're going to keep it general, we're going to say, okay, we are working with a GI slash O G protein. Then we're going to say that our alpha subunit is either alpha I or it's alpha O. So we will write alpha I slash O to denote either this alpha subunit is alpha I or it's alpha O. Do not think that it's some sort of chimera of both. It is one or the other. Right. So when the heterotrimeric G protein is inactive. The alpha subunit, whether it be um, alpha I or alpha O, has bound to it GDP. Okay? Right. Now, when the uh, GPCR is inactive, so before this ligand binds to the GPCR, it was inactive, um, and the G protein is also inactive, you can, in some cases, get this G protein actually bound to the inner, uh, inner domain of this GPCR. In other cases, the heterotrimeric G protein will just be uh, bound to the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bivar, i.e. this inner layer of phospholipids uh, that makes up the phospholipid bivar, so the cytosolic layer, effectively. Okay, so, either way, when the ligand comes along and binds to the GPCR, the GPCR becomes catalytically active, and it's going to interact with this heterotrimeric GI slash O G protein which is either bound to it or is floating around on the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bivalve. Okay? And the reaction which it catalyzes is basically it's going to cut off this GDP uh, molecule here and it's going to bind on GTP instead. So what you get is the alpha I slash O subunit here now bound, instead of being bound to GDP, it's bound instead to GTP. Okay, right, so there you have alpha I slash O bound to GTP, and once you've actually bound GTP to the alpha I slash O subunit, it no longer wants to associate with the beta and the gamma subunit. So they go off, they remain bound to each other, but uh, they no longer are bound to the alpha I O subunit. So this is our beta gamma subunit. Right, okay, now, what does this alpha I slash O with GTP bound to it actually do now? Well, basically, it's going to um, interact with adenylyl cyclase enzymes, and this is an important point. This is something most people get wrong. Most people will tell you that the alpha I slash O subunit bonded to GTP, which is often written like this, alpha I slash O bonded to GTP. Okay. Uh, most people will tell you that this subunit will go off and inhibit adenylyl cyclases. It's not strictly true. What, they, what it goes and does is it inhibits the activation of adenylyl cyclase, um, specifically certain adenylyl cyclases. Uh, it's going to go off and it's going to stop the calcium activation of two adenylyl cyclases. So the adenylyl cyclases against which this subunit is specifically active are adenylyl cyclase 1, and adenylyl cyclase 8, which you are famous basically for being the calcium activated in adenylyl cyclases. And basically what this subunit does is it stops calcium from being able to activate these two adenylyl cyclases. Okay, so let's just go over the mechanism by which these adenylyl cyclases uh, are activated by calcium and then uh, how this alpha I slash O bonded to GTP is going to stop that activation of these two adenylyl cyclases by calcium. But we'll do that in the next video.